All right, we're back with some more coding problems in R. I came across this problem. It's called uh, find the longest word. So given a sentence as an input, create a function to return the longest word in the sentence. And if there are multiple words with the same length, return the first one in the list. All right, let's get started. Create a little code chunk here. And let's make a, an example sentence. I'm going to create a variable called sentence. And we can create a new string using quotations. How about this? A dog went on a walk to the circus. There's a sentence. Let's run this code. I'm going to oh, clear my workspace again so we can start from scratch. I'll run that again. And there our sentence went into the variable called sentence. So let's check this out. Uh, we can look at this and see right away that the longest word in here is the word circus. It's got six letters. How could we identify that using R. Um, first of all, let's take a look at what we've done. If we go into the console and type the name of our variable, it contains one thing in it, this entire character string. You might be curious, well, let's uh, maybe try to find out what the first word is here because we're going to want to evaluate each of the words and count how many letters are ancient in each of the words. So you might think that if you type the variable name and put a one in the index using square brackets, you might be able to index into the first word in this variable. Let's see what happens if we do that. In fact, it returns the entire sentence to us. Let's try two and we get an NA. All right, turns out there's just one thing in this variable. It's one big long string. Now, how can we split up this variable into its component words? You might Google something like splitting a character vector in R. Let's put a hashtag. And if you Googled something like that, you'd learn about a function called STRSPLIT, called, or short for string split. Uh, type question mark, type in the name of that function. And here we can see there's an intrinsic function that will split the elements of a character vector. And uh, there's a, some notes here on how to use the function. Uh, oftentimes when you look at these notes, you might still have questions about how to use a function. The, each of the arguments as the inputs are defined briefly. More notes under details. And usually at the end, you can see some examples. And copying and trying out these examples can be useful. I've used this function before, so let's see if I can remember how it goes. What you want to do is input a character vector. So let's just try that and see what happens. All right, we've got an error. Argument split is missing with no default. That's correct. If we look in here, there's an argument called split. It doesn't really show us how to use it. Uh, and this definition isn't super helpful. Fortunately, I know how to make it work. I have to type in the word split equals, and then we need to supply some kind of character that will uh, split the sentence based on this character. And what we want to do is split it by the space character. So I put two quotes, and I put a space in there. So let's see what happens when we run this now. 
All right. We can see that we've split up the sentence into each of the different words, and that's great. I'm going to create a variable, call it first split. So we can put the contents of this operation into a variable and then try to figure out how to work with this. Let's take a look. So you might think that we could just simply type the name of our variable and maybe the number one inside of the square brackets to index into this variable. And again, what happens is we return some kind of confusing looking things. We see all the words again, not just the first word. And there's this new thing, two square brackets. It turns out that this particular function does something mildly complicated. It uh, splits the words and then puts it into a particular kind of variable structure called a list. So if you remember from before, we can use the word class to find out what kind of variable we're working with. So let's just do that, type class, and we see that it's a list. Now there's um, a particular way that you index into a list. You need to have two square brackets. And actually, let's just go over here, look at the environment tab, scroll down. We can see a couple of things here. We can see that this variable is a list of one. Now lists can have lots of lists in them. And inside the list, you can put things like other variables. So here we want to index and identify that we want to search through list one. That's what the first part does. And we're going to add another square bracket, put the number one. And this is basically saying, find me the first element in the first list. And look, it returns the first word A. We can also ask for the second element in the first list, and we'll get the second word. In this example, I want to skip past using lists. I, I find them sometimes annoying to use. Um, and if you don't want to work with a list variable, there's a way to unlist the variable. So let's see what happens when we use the unlist function. Okay, if I unlist this variable, it's going to spit out all of the words into a character vector. Uh, I was going to give it a name. Let's see. Uh, how about this? Unlisted sentence. Just so that we know what we're dealing with. So we now have a new variable called unlisted sentence. And it will work in a more normal way. If we ask for the first thing in it, it will show us an A. If we ask for the second thing, it will show us dog. If we ask for the third thing, and so on. All right, so this was intended to show you a little bit of the behavior of these functions. Uh, let's keep going, and uh, but we will say split the sentence. Um, gonna, what we're going to slowly do is, is build all the code we need to solve this problem. So the first thing is we need a sentence. Um, we're going to create a variable that has the sentence, uh, a split version of the sentence. And we're just going to use one line. This is the line that will do the split based off of the space. But we want to unlist this. So we can actually write unlist. And just so we can see what's going on, this entire thing is now being 
the input to the unlist function, which is wrapped around it. So let's just notice something here. When we write this string split function, it begins with the parentheses. If you uh, kind of go, I guess, to the right side of this parentheses, R will show you the closing parentheses for that particular function. So this first one closes this one, and the second one, it's going gray, closes the parentheses for the unlist function. All right. So now we could do something like create a loop. And let's show you a different way to do a loop. For i in split sentence. I'm going to do this. I'm going to print i. In other examples, in our for loop, we've used numbers. Um, here, uh, what what's going to happen is the value of i is going to be replaced with each element inside this vector. Now, just to remind ourselves what is in that vector, let's type it in and take a look. Oh, it's not found. Okay, we need to run this line, run that line, and now I'm just pressing up in the console to get back to uh, command to print out the contents of this variable. Now we can see it has these uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 things in it. And if I run this loop, what's going to happen is we're going to be systematically putting each of these elements into the variable i, then we'll be printing out the variable i. So we should see all of these words being printed out because these words are going into the variable i at each step of the loop. And sure enough, there we go. They're each being printed out. And that's great. So we know that uh, i will be uh, each of the different words at each step of the loop. Now what we'd like to find out is how many letters are in the word. So how can we find out the length of the word? Let's go outside the loop and start with the first element of this variable. We know that has the letter A. And how can we find out how many letters are in there? One thing that's going to be helpful is the length function. Let's see how that works and if it's going to help us. Okay, if we run the length function, it's telling us the length is one, and that's the correct answer. Let's try it for a different one, put two. It's telling us the length is one again, and three, length is one, and four, length is four, one again. So this isn't giving us the answer that we want, um, just to tell you a little bit more about the length function, I'm going to quickly create a temporary variable called a. I'm going to put four numbers in it. And let's do the length function on that variable. Okay, we're getting the number four. There are four elements of that vector. The length function tells us about the number of elements. Previously, we counted the number of words that are in our sentence. We knew there was eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, there's nine of them, I guess. So if we were to do the length function on split sentence, we should see that there are nine total words. All right, so what we've done here is use the length function to figure out how many total words are in the sentence. At this point, you might start thinking, well, maybe I'll just Google um, how to count the number of letters in a word in R, and that would probably be helpful. But I think we can use some of the concepts that we've already discussed to count the number of words in or sorry, count the number of letters in a word. 
for example, let's take the word in position two. That's the word dog. Well, how could we use the string split function to split this character vector into each of its letters? If we could do that, then we could use the length function to figure out how many letters there are. So let's try in one shot, uh, I'll write it down here, str split, split sentence two, and I'll show you a trick. If we set the split argument to nothing, so what I've done is type two quotations and I haven't put anything in the middle. Uh, it's like an empty character. Let's run this, see what happens. We create a list with one list in it. And inside of that, we have a character vector with three elements, D, O, G. So we split the word dog into its characters. I'm gonna show you something that looks kind of ugly. So we're going to unlist this. Now we just get these three letters in one character vector. We're going to add the length command. And if we do all of this in one line, we will get our answer three. Okay, so part of the problem of figuring out which word is the longest in a sentence will require us to count how many letters are in each word. We've accomplished that goal here for the second word, but I'm going to suggest that we write a function. Let's call it count letters in uh, count letters. We're going to write a function that will count the number of letters in a word. And we'll use this function later. And for the input, Let's use x just as a generic input. All right. Well, we've got a one-liner that does our job for us. So let us, we could, we could write a one-line function. Uh, we could say return, and then we want to return basically all of this except we don't want to split a particular thing in that variable. We want to split whatever the input is. So somebody's, we're going to change the value of x, and we want to split that, unlist it, and get the length. So if we run this code, we should see our function appear here. And let's try it out. So we type in the name of our function, and let's enter the word dog as a string and see what happens. Great, we're getting the number three. Let's enter something longer. Okay, it looks like it's working. Let's try just one thing. We get a one, two things. We get a two, three things. We get a three, four things. We get a four. Our function is working. Now, if you're looking at this function, it can be difficult to read. As you can see, we've nested a bunch of things in here. So let's show an example of rewriting this function so that you can see each of the individual operations. Okay. I'm going to say temp split. And the first thing we want to do is string split x by an empty character. Then we want to unlist the split. So we're unlisting our variable temp split. Then we want to find the length of this uh, new variable. We can do that right here. Uh, unlist split. 
So our answer is going to be in this variable find length, and we want to return that. So this is a longer way of writing out uh, the very same thing that's happening up here. And sometimes it can be useful to write functions in this way so that you understand what each of the steps are. I'm going to call this count letters B. It's a second version of the function. Let's see if it works. Actually, I forgot to leave up here just an example of running this. Let's try count letters B. Put in the word dog. And looks like we're getting the right answer. One, two, three things. Yep, it's working. All right. Let's go back and look at the problem. We need to create a function to return the longest word in the sentence. All right, let's gather up some of the things we've worked on and make a new code chunk. There's our sentence. Let's copy, let's use the function count letters just so we can see everything in one place here. Okay, so we've got the ability to count the number of letters in a sentence. Let's write a little loop that goes through each of the words in the sentence and then returns the number of letters in each of the words. So if you're remembering from before, we need to split this sentence. So I'm just writing unlist string split sentence split equals, in this case we'll use the space. So I'll just press play and run all these lines of code. Now we're ready to go. We're going to do for i in split sentence. And if you remember from before, if we print i, we should see all of the words being printed. That's great. Let's try printing something else. So what happens if we print count letters parentheses i? This will be submitting the contents of i to our count letters function and that will print that out for each word. Let's run that loop. All right, looks like we're getting closer here. So the first word was A, it has one letter, the second word was dog, it has three letters, and so on. Okay. So how can we now use all this information to figure out which word has the longest or the most number of letters? In order to, well, one way to do this is we could use R's max function. Let me tell you about that. Create a temporary variable. I'm just going to put some numbers into this variable. There we go. Now we can see that the largest number is an eight. Turns out that R has a function called max and it will find the largest number for you. So if we said max a, it's going to return eight. So this is an intrinsic function we could make use of. You might ask yourself, well, how does the max function work? How could, could we write our own max function that could find the largest number in a list? And I'll leave that up to you. For now, the question is how can we integrate this function into our, into our loop to solve this problem. All right. Now, I haven't really thought about this until now. So I'm gonna fool around and see what happens.
I'll make a copy of the loop to keep working in it. And I think what I'd like to do is create a vector that contains the, the word lengths for every word. So how about I create an empty vector called word lengths. And let's work it like this. We're going to create a counter started at zero. For every word that we evaluate, we're going to increase the counter by one. And then what we're going to do is use the counter value, which is going to basically go from one, two, three, four, and so on for every word, to index into our word lengths variable. And then we're going to store the letter, the number of letters in that word. All right, let's see if we run this, what happens? Got an error. All right, I messed up, what did I do wrong? I can see right away that I accidentally used square brackets here. Count letters is a function and it needs parentheses. Let's go again. All right, so something happened. Let's check out the contents of the word lengths variable. All right, it has a bunch of numbers and it looks like they're the right answers. Uh, we should probably do our due diligence and uh, test out to see if these are in fact the correct numbers. So I'll just quickly look at the sentence. The first one is a one, yep. Second one is a three, yep. Next one's a four, yep. And on and on, it looks like our function is working. Okay. So we can see in our list of word lengths that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that the word in the ninth position is a six, and we can see that six is larger than all of the other ones. We could do something like this, max word lengths, we get a six, and that tells us uh, basically that the the word with the most letters has six letters in it. It doesn't tell us which word it is. It's not getting us the word circus, for example. Let me skip forward and show you what we're trying to get R to do here. We have the variable split sentence, and we know that the ninth word contains the word circus. We're trying to um, basically do these things. We've got our list that uh, tells us which word, uh, tells us how many letters are in each word. And we need to find the biggest number here, which is a six. And then we need to find what position it is in. So we want to figure out what position is the number six in. We know it's in position nine, but we want R to tell us that it's in position nine. Once we can get that to happen, uh, so actually let's, let's create a variable here, position of largest word. This is a variable and currently it doesn't have anything in it. How can we put something in there? Well, there's a function called which. Oh, what's this? At which max. This is a useful one. Let's try that. Which dot max. 
and just type in the question mark which.max where is the min or max determines the location i.e. index of the first minimum or maximum of a numeric or logic vector okay let's see if this works which.max and I'm going to type in word links oh great this is working for us so it's telling us that the index is position 9 so write that up in here position of largest word so now position of oops, that variable contains the number nine, which means that if we replace the nine with position of largest word, we should be able to return the word circus, which is the correct answer. All right, we've worked through a bunch of the concepts we need to complete this task and we've got a bunch of garbage code in some sense it's just all a big mess let's see if we can write a function uh, call it find largest word given some input x Uh, ideally, we would want to be able to type find largest word parentheses and then put um, you know some sentence in here as an input and then have it tell us what the largest word is for any sentence. So we're going to try to uh, collect all the code that we wrote and write a more generalizable function that's perhaps... Uh, a little bit more neat and tidy. Okay. So let's take a look back at what we did. We're going to need this because we're going to take our input. We're going to split it. Here our input will be x. So we're going to change this variable name from sentence to x. And then what did we do? Well, we could probably just copy all of this code right here and see if we can get it to work inside this function. Now notice I'm doing a little bit of indenting here. Let's see what we have. We're creating a word links variable it's going to keep track of all of the word lengths we set our counter to zero and then we're going to go through the contents of split sentence add one to counter and we're going to populate our word lengths variable with the letter counts using this function all right Then we need to get uh, the position of largest word using this part. And then, oops, uh, yeah, this is the same. Split sentence, give me the word that is in the position of largest word, basically. And we want to return that out of the function. All right. Let's see if this works. We've got our function there. Uh, we could run this line. We can see the answer should be sentence. That's the largest word in this sentence. Let's see if it pops out as sentence. Great. Let's try a couple other things just to see um, how about I'm just going to write three words cat dog and then two now here's a case where we've got two words that have three letters 
So will our function correctly give us back the first word that has three letters? And it looks like it does that too. That's nice. All right. So this example went over uh, finding the longest word, and we learned a little bit about splitting up character vectors. Uh, we saw our first lists, and then we wrote this function to solve this problem for us.